Welcome everyone, and thank you for attending today's Healthcare IT News and HIMSS Industry Solutions webinar, The Top 5 Benefits of Nurse Call EMR Integration, sponsored by Rollins. Documenting data in the EMR as it happens is fundamental to providing the right care to a patient. During this webinar, you'll learn how integrating a nurse call system into your EMR will enable increased productivity and better patient care. Today's webinar will feature a panel from Nemours Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children. Starting us off will be David Hancock, Senior Director of Nursing, followed by Diane Bunnell, Clinical Nurse Specialist, and Brian Oxendale, Project Manager. And wrapping things up today will be Veronica Kegley, uh, Customer Program Manager at Rolland. So now without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to David to begin our presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining the webinar today. Um, this is Dave Hancock uh, from the Moors. Uh, today we're going to be talking with you about how we are coupling world-class care with advanced technology to improve our patient care outcomes. Um, you know, here at Nemours, we started our journey uh, well over 70 years ago with one man's vision, uh, Alfred I. DuPont. Um, you know, Alfred I. DuPont had a vision uh, to improve the lives of children and really do whatever it, whatever it possibly could do to prevent and treat the most disabling childhood conditions. Uh, he, is, he has then uh, continued that journey through all of us here working at Nemours today, and, uh, you know, his his primary uh, statement that he, he has passed on to many of us, it is really is the duty of everyone to do what is within his power to alleviate human suffering. Uh, and in many, many cases throughout the organization today, we, we live and breathe this in all that we do. Some key points about Nemours is that we are an internationally recognized integrated children's health system. Uh, we have, and you'll see in some upcoming slides, we have integrated uh, a new, into a new hospital in Florida as well as our, uh, as our site here in Delaware, Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children. Um, the Nemours Foundation has been built through a legacy of the philanthropy of Alfred I. DuPont um, starting back uh, in around 1936 when the foundation was, uh, was started based upon Alfred I. DuPont, Alfred I. DuPont's will and trust. Uh, Nemours owns and operates the Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children here in Wilmington, Delaware, and the Nemours Children's Hospital in Orlando, Florida. In addition to the two hospital sites, we have sites in Jacksonville, Florida, Pensacola, Florida, and we are continuing to create partnerships throughout this Delaware Valley area where we are located, in addition to uh, other sites in Florida. We are, we, uh, are largest, we are the largest provider of the online children's health information uh, through NemoursKidsHealth.org, which receives over 1 billion visits annually. Uh, it is a wonderful site that divides that information for parents, children, and teens, uh, where it's the, the information on that website has been reviewed by the physicians as part of Nemours. We are continuing to support research, education, prevention, and advocacy programs in the communities it serves. It provides care for nearly 300,000 unique patients each year, and we are continuing to grow year over year. Providing, we, are, we are continuing to provide state-of-the-art state pediatric care at our flagship hospital at both, in both Orlando and here in Wilmington. The Moore's Children's Hospital in Orlando opened in October of 2012 and the Moore's Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children started back in 1940 as the Alfred I. Uh, Alfred I. DuPont Hospital Institute, which at the time was prim primarily caring for children with orthopedic issues. We have, we have then grown into the Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children, uh, and then we are now currently into, into our new expansion, which is where we are going to evolve into the growth of the technology we are going to be talking about today. Um, we, have, we opened our doors back in late October, early November of 2014 into the new expansion, which you see in the picture to the right. Really, Nemours is an integrated system of care. We, are really, we have grown from one hospital, one institute, one hospital into a, a children's health system. Uh, we have two main hospitals, 14 partner hospitals. There are 42 outpatient primary, urgent, and specialty care practices. Uh, we have 1,500 nurses. We are a magnet recognized organization. 640 physicians, 200 plus researchers, 27 PhDs, uh, around 1,500 residents, fellows, and students that rotate through uh, our hospital here in Wilmington annually, and overall we are employing over 6,000 associates. 
We have a very high focus on our patient and family-centered care. We, we have three main uh, pillars that we are foundationally building off of each day, participation and collaboration, information sharing, and respect and dignity. Participation and collaboration is one that we hold very true to each and every day. We are constantly, in every way, shape, and form, asking families and patients for their input, listening to their concerns, explaining what we can do throughout their treatment in order to make sure that we are focusing in on the parent and the child in every way possible. As, as it relates to information sharing, we are making sure that we are focusing on timely and accurate, under, making sure the information is understandable for both the child and the family, and we are evolving into even, use our even using our technology platforms such as Mind the Moors to help, that, help with that each and every day and certainly respect and dignity. We are honoring each family's culture, perspective, and values when we're planning and delivering their care. Also here at Nemours, we are committed to the quality and safety of each and every patient. We ha as you can see by the statistics on this page, uh, certainly we are focusing in on our 30-day readmission rates. We are 50% better than national average for pediatrics. We have immunization rates for primary care that are greater than 95 percent. Uh, due to the technology we have at the bedside and through some of our new technology of wireless scanners, we are having a greater than 95 percent closed loop barcoding rate. We have a medication error free rate of 99.65 percent of administered doses. Our outpatient electronic prescription rates are also 90 to 95 percent. We have been consistently performing in the top tier of U.S. News and World Report for quality and safety and for two years running also in the top tier percentile for leapfrog scores. And we've also been recognized by him for stage seven recognition of our electronic health record for its use and our outcomes. I'm going to turn it over to Brian now and I'll take you through the, some more of the presentation. So I think as you can see um, from exactly what Dave was just saying, some of the accolades that we've received here at Nemours. I mean, you can see the, the focus on or the, the uh, nursing excellence the focus on quality and safety, and the investment in information systems that Nemours has made uh, over the past uh, many years. So as I walk through, we're going to transition a little bit more into kind of the, the project that we've done um, where, we've, where we've utilized our nurse call system. So if we move into looking a little bit more about our, uh, our uh, IT systems, so you, you can see that we've invest a lot of time and energy and money into, into using EPIC. Uh, we've had a long history with EPIC, roughly about 10 years worth uh, in the inpatient world and longer in the outpatient, uh, outpatient side of things. We have, we're, we're focusing kind of in three different layers or a multi-layered approach. So we have an internal uh, uh, audience that use EPIC that are pretty much our, our, our caregivers at the bedside or out in the, out in the practice sites. Uh, we then take it to community providers, school nurses, and then even farther than that, uh, looping in our patients and families through our Mind the Moors uh, portal. So then we tie into the, the team call system, which is what we call the nurse call system here at Nemours, because this system involves more than just a singular nurse. It involves the entire care team in the, uh, in the care of the child. So it seems like we're loading. All right, perfect. So as Dave alluded to, um, Nemours uh, recently opened up a uh, 440,000 square foot uh, inpatient tower, uh, completely adjacent to our uh, our uh, current hospital facility. This uh, expansion uh, added 144 single singer, single occupancy rooms. 44 exam rooms in our new emergency department, a new cafeteria, and a fabulous five-story atrium. So some, some stats for, uh, for you stat people out on the uh, call. The, the construction used about uh, 2,500 tons of uh, structural steel, over 78,000 tons of concrete. We have a 220,000-gallon uh, stormwater retention system and the construction site took about 9.5 uh, acres on our, on our current campus. Um, so then diving into some of the IT stats. So not only with a new uh, nurse call system we implemented, we also implemented a number of different other systems. 
we implemented a new communication device, a new physiological monitoring system, a new pediatric, pediatric protection system, along with our new uh, Rolland Responder 5 nurse call system. Along with that, we've had, we have over 200 miles of network cabling in our expansion, as well as 400 new TVs, many data drops, cameras, all of those uh, fun, techy things. <coughs> So a little bit about the project background. So uh, Responder 5 was implemented at our Nemours Children's Hospital down in Orlando, Florida in 2012. Uh, the Nemours Children's Hospital was a greenfield site. Uh, so we had an opportunity to kind of bring Rolland in, look at the technology, and really play with it down in our, uh, our Florida site. So when it came to making a decision about what system to use up here in the uh, Delaware expansion, um, it was no question. Responder 5 was flat spec, um, so that was the, it was its only competition. It was, we pretty much just chose it uh, to be implemented here for the expansion. Uh, the project with the implementation of the nurse call system uh, was led by a core group of uh, individuals in our IT department, myself from the PMO, uh, nursing professional development group, and uh, a number of nursing leadership uh, individuals. Uh, and the, the project was sponsored by our hospital administration here uh, at Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children. The system was designed by an interdisciplinary team to ensure that it uh, plan and fit our model of care. So we brought in nurses, physicians, uh, EVS staff. We brought in the whole gamut of the care team to make sure that we were designing it to, uh, to fit the entire care team. Um, the, the one thing that we did, we were working within was we were working within our uh, construction manager to implement this product, uh, which Diane will get to a little bit later as far as some challenges that we had. Um, and then the, the project took about 18 months to design, install, and configure 120 inpatient rooms, 24 PICU rooms, 42 ED exam rooms, two trauma rooms, which those numbers should add up to the, the previous numbers I gave before about the expansion overall. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Diane Bennell uh, to take us take us through the rest of the presentation or take the rest of the Moore's presentation. Thanks, Brian. Um, I get to talk about some of the fun things and the successes and some of the lessons that we learned through this project. Um, so some of the early wins that we certainly realized was uh, one-way integration with Epic, which is as Brian described our EMR so that some of the patient demographics could be fed into what we call our team call system. So um, that was a nice one-way uh, feed of information. We do enjoy two-way integration between our handheld communication device and the nurse call system, uh, which has been a nice functionality for clinicians who are busy caring for multiple patients and moving around the environment. They're able to respond to alarms and call back into the room um, through the system. We also um, have been able to enjoy the ability to capture room turnover um, and the timing thereof by utilizing the staff terminal and some of the visual displays outside of the room, such as dome lights. Um, and we've enjoyed this efficiency on units especially that have high admission and discharge frequency. It really does improve some of our workflows and allows us to collect and analyze our processes and where we might be able to be uh, more efficient with our use of time. And it's definitely helped communication on a, on a large um, a larger unit with an interesting geography. Uh, we've been able to integrate our system with something unique to Nemours called our logistics center. Um, what's described here on the slide is our caregiver in the sky. Um, this is essentially um, a center that is staffed by EMTs remotely in our sister hospital in Florida. Um, who remotely monitor a variety of patient environmental dynamics and they can communicate with us as well as the family in the room. And that's all been a success we've realized since implementing the team call system. And then something that was certainly brand new to us was expanded one-button communication methods within the team um, for urgent needs, such as a staff assist button, as well as non-urgent communications that can be achieved with one-button technology. So respiratory therapy, child life, we're starting team rounds. We've enjoyed all of those things. Some of the lessons learned, um, 
We did find that by adding um, an additional code blue, blue button and putting it on our team station has put us at risk for a rather sharp increase in the number of false code blues. So we are learning our way um, around that issue. We've changed the location and um, are considering whether or not that's the right location for an emergency button. Another lesson that we learned, I guess, um, as a person that was involved in the training is we've observed that sometimes it takes a little while for staff to adapt to new technology. Um, so at this point today, we're about three months into um, our new space. Um, and we certainly found that um, there are some challenges with translating the training that we did into clinical practice. So we still find some teams um, who are maybe underutilizing some of the buttons and workflows that we created. Um, we've also encountered teams who have chosen configurations but may not have fully understood um, or imagined how those workflows were going to work in a brand new physical environment. Um, and then lastly, by having multiple systems, we have added a slight burden to our staff of needing to log into multiple systems. So they need to log into a communication device, uh, the team call system, um, and EPIC, the EMR. Um, as we also have begun to receive some of the great ideas of our team members, we're looking to balance the requests from different areas with a housewide standard. So we're trying to avoid, you know, having complex variants while also kind of being able to accept and honor the great ideas that our team members bring to us. Um, and we've learned that um, we can use the system to collect data and to create action item lists for improvements. So things like room turnover and staff response um, has been a good lesson that we've learned. You see the picture of our staff terminal button layout, and this is just one of many screens that offer the one button functionality that we described. Um, I think I just have to pause here and say that adding all of this new technology and configuring the system was very complex, and as, as Brian described, it was a multidisciplinary effort to come up with that. Um, and I think as we're beginning to gain experience with the device, we're learning that there are some value-added buttons versus the burden of having multiple buttons. So we're learning our way through that. Um, just of note, we had to train over 1,100 clinicians, both in the classroom and web-based, um, along with all of the other new technologies that Brian described. So this training effort um, was fairly massive. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we had was trying to help staff to imagine how the devices would all integrate together without being physically into the space um, in which they were going to be using it. So now at three months, our next steps are to reach back out to our end users and gather evaluative data, talk to the nurses, the respiratory therapists, the housekeepers who are using the system, and get some in insight from them. I think we're poised to explore some additional one-button um, communication methods where we may add value to folks' work. Um, we are an organization that is deeply involved in continuous improvement, so we're anxious to start exploring some of the real-time documentation with activities that might be gained from the system. And we're always looking for ways to improve our compliance and our patient care. Our wish list, if you will. <laughs> um, we really are focused, as Dave began our section of the program, talking about our focus on patients and family-centered care. So any way that we can um, use the system to provide a better patient experience is something that we are, that is on our wish list. Um, we'd really like to allow technology to work in our favor, um, reaping the awards of technology without becoming burdened by it, and finding a way that we can be more efficient so that we really can spend more time and be more present to our patients and families. Things like pain management documentation and the like. And we would like to capture more safety and quality documentation in real time. And uh, the next section of this program is going to explore some of that bi-directional communication um, that Rollin has developed. And here's where some of the new functionality that they describe may offer a solution to organizations who are striving to document the many quality and safety requirements and activities with efficiency that we all hope that technology brings to us. And at this point, I'm going to hand off to Ronnie with Responder. Thank you for sharing the great ways technology and the Responder solution are integrating and streamlining communications among your care teams. 
Recognizing the future wishes of Nemours and other hospitals, Rolland is introducing a two-way interface between the EMR and nurse call. The benefits of this interface are improved documentation, improved flow of information, and ultimately improved staff and patient satisfaction. How did we accomplish this? Rolland built a communication bridge, responder all touch for EMR, that automates charting, provides timely updates, and communicates key information between the EMR and the responder system. Real-time communication is a key benefit of this interface. From the EMR, changes to patient conditions, status, or risk are immediately transmitted to the responder system and shared with the care team. Completing this full circle of communication, a button press in the responder solution triggers automated documentation in the EMR of activities and events related to the patient, such as pain assessment, hourly rounding, and repositioning. This bidirectional data exchange makes information easily accessible, visible, and actionable. Generate hands-free, real-time documentation using AllTouch for EMR. Completion of routine tasks are easily recorded in the EMR from a simple button press. Automatic and timely documentation gives more time to provide direct patient care and keep the patient record current. Related to automated documentation, Errors from routine and manual entries are dramatically reduced. Vice versa, documentation in the EMR of hard to find updates to a patient chart are immediately transmitted to the responder solution for real-time visibility through the illumination of corridor lights and updates to colored swoops shown in responder software. Routine activities such as hourly rounding, are charted automatically as it occurs, eliminating the need to sign into the patient record or to remember to chart later when time allows. This fulfills the hospital's desire to, of affording more time with patients and obtaining quality documentation in real time. Enhance patient safety using this two-way interface. When key status updates or conditions on a patient are documented in the EMR, responder can push notification to provide visual indicators to all providers to raise awareness and minimize risk to patients. This workflow enables technology to work for hospitals and, save and create a safer environment. All touch for EMR links responder with the EMR as an active member of the clinical team. Enabling real-time documentation of patient care activity and timely communication of patient data puts responder all touch for EMR at the heart of patient-centered care. This has been a quick overview of the many benefits afforded by this interface. You can learn more about responder all touch on our website www.rollin.com. Feel free to submit a request for follow-up on the website, and a member of our team will be in contact shortly thereafter. Thank you very much for taking time to join us in this webinar. Mike, I am passing the mic back to you so that we can address questions that were submitted. Okay, thanks so much, Ronnie, and thanks to all of you for a great presentation. Uh, we do have some time for some questions, so yeah. let's begin. Uh, first up, uh, what EMRs are compatible with your integration software? David? Uh, I'll, I'll address that question. Okay. Um, because we use um, the standard protocol of HL7 used by all hospitals for sharing of information, um, this, system, this interface is compatible with any EMR. Very good. Uh, 
Someone's asking, is it Responder the only NERS call offering two-way EMR integration? Yes, it is the only one at this time. Okay. Uh, you know, while we're waiting for some uh, for some other questions to roll in, you know, any points from the presentation you guys would like to reiterate or maybe elaborate on? Either anyone from Nemours or or Ronnie? Oh, we just got a question. In. Is is that HL seven based integration between Rollins and the EMR? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, well, uh, you know, unless uh, there's, there's well, any closing thoughts, uh, I think we, uh, we're good. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time today to the audience. So thanks again for joining us today. Oh, we, we do have one late uh, question coming in. Is the Responder 5 and Responder 5 All Touch two different systems? Uh, the Responder 5 All Touch is an interface that is part of the Responder 5 solution. And it is based on HL7, and we use standard messaging, uh, the R01 and the R40. OK. And it, and it is available to any Responder 5 solution, uh, site that has staff terminals. OK. Uh, very good. Well, you know, if we have any uh, late questions, I believe we could probably follow up with them after the event. So thanks again to everyone for joining us today. And just a reminder that if you would like to view the archive of this webinar or share it with a colleague, please visit the on-demand webinar section on healthcareitnews.com or hims.org.